before you submit that application let's talk about writing a successful supporting information most people don't realize this but you need to spend some time writing your supporting information so you can produce a top-notch essay it's your chance to stand out of the crowd and tell them what makes you the best candidate for the role i'll focus on the stp application in this video but whatever we talk about in this video can be transferred to any nhs application or any role within the nhs if you are seeing my face for the first time, you're welcome. My name is Cynthia. I'm a first year STP in Nottingham. I have so much I need to pass to you guys in this video. So I've prepared a short presentation slide to make sure I touch on everything. So many people have reached out to me asking me how I wrote a successful STP application. So I've made this video to ensure that I touch on everything. I know we are getting into the holidays, but the school has updated their website. STP application opens early or mid January. So in enjoying our holiday, we need to keep it in mind that we have to write a very top-notch essay to increase our chances of getting in. So let's dive in. So for STP 2024, we're asked to write about how we meet the person's specification. They have over 20 points or about 20 points or so. And we had just 1,000 words to write on. So my advice to you is try to touch on most, if not all the points they have there. Because in one of the webinars, I heard one of the um, assessors say that you are marked against the person's specification. I don't know what you'll be asked to write on in 2025, but this is based on what we're asked to do in 2024. So whatever you are asked to write, these skills will be transferable to that. Some people struggle to find how they can introduce their essay. For me, I did a little bit of an introduction. I kind of talked about my motivation. I tried to answer the question, why this role? In, in talking about the motivation, I talked about my background and my qualification. And I kind of told a story how I became interested in cancer. So I lost my grandmother. And at some point when I was doing my BSc, I became interested in cancer, so I kind of introduced that at this point. Then I also talked about the number of people globally at risk um, of developing cancer. Then I introduced my curiosity about the specialty. So like talking about um, targeted therapies and precision medicine, I just knew about chemotherapy and just a little bit about cancer. Going further into it, I found out about targeted therapies, so I mentioned my curiosity about the specialty and how all this motivated my application to this specialty. So that's my first paragraph. I did an introduction. So just like talking about my motivation and answering the question, why this role? Then the main body. What I've done in this presentation, if you look at this screen, on one side of the screen, I have the person specification for the STP. So I've copied it and I've pasted it here. So I did a summary because we have just 1,000 words and I, my goal was to touch on everything. So for the ones that are related to each other, I tried to put them together in a summary and um, let them stay together in one paragraph. So for the first main paragraph, I used my master's dissertation to address ability to design research investigation, ability to analyze scientific literature, understanding quality control, following SOP, working autonomously and handling patient sample. So in doing my master's dissertation, I did a literature review. I produced an experimental design. I also prepared a proposal. I followed SOP in doing all my lab work and I kept good record of my data. I worked with my project supervisor for guidance and I followed lab rules and safety for precaution. If you look at what I've done here, I've been able to talk about how my master's dissertation helps me to meet this person's specification. One thing I'll tell you about writing your supporting information is you need to demonstrate how you meet the person's specification. It's just like, yes, I understand. This is what you want from me. This is what I have. And this is how I intend to use what I have to meet up your expectations from me. So whoever is reading your essay or whoever your assessor is, when you spell this thing out, the person understands that 
you know what you are getting into, you understand what you've done, and you know how you're going to use what you've done to meet up with your expectations on the STP. Next, I talked about um, a committed in-depth interest in scientific practice, understanding the role of my specialty in healthcare, ability to analyze complex information, then expert analytical, scientific, and clinical aspect of the work to a variety of people. So I talked about my fascination about cancer genomics. I'm fascinated about liquid biopsies and how patients will benefit from that. I use that to show how committed I am and how I have an in-depth interest in um, scientific practice and its application to direct clinical care. I also use that to show that I understand the role of my specialty in healthcare. I talked about my experience as a biomed student on lab data, slides, images, and interpretation. We see that a lot. So I use that to um, explain my ability to analyze complex information comprising lab data. Then I also talked about my clinical diagnosis module. So we did a lot of case studies and we did a lot of interpretation. I talked about um, my research finding and how I advised for that research to be carried out and all. So I use that to talk about my ability to make judgments, including clinical judgment, involving fact and situation that will impact patients. So if I, if I was able to pass that module where I had so many case studies I needed to study and um, make conclusions about, so the skills I developed on that module will be transferable to achieve this. Then to explain analytical and scientific concepts, I was a medical representative and in that role, I was expected to um, talk to doctors about my products and different healthcare professionals and also talk to patients directly when we are doing outreaches. So I use that to demonstrate that I have the ability to explain the clinical aspect of the work to a variety of people. So like I said before, you see what I've done. I give specific, I give specific examples. I wasn't vague. I wouldn't just mention something and go on to the next one. So you don't just write for writing's sake. So you need to reflect on what you've done and come up with examples that will demonstrate how you meet this person's specification. They are not just there for the sake of being there. They are there because they want you to tell them how you meet them. So this was what I did. I gave specific example for each point, though I tried to summarize and pair them together. Next, good IT skills and knowledge of common computer packages, ability to perform a wide range of duties, um, highly developed coordination skills, good dexterity, hand-to-eye coordination, blah, blah, blah. So in doing my dissertation again, <laughs> you know, dissertation is actually a lot and there are so many skills I developed doing that dissertation. So for each person's specification, I try to bring in the skills I developed from my dissertation and how I'll transfer that to the STP. So I use graph, graph path prism to analyze my data. I typed my dissertation myself and I communicated my finding via visualization. So that addressed my IT skills and my knowledge of common computer packages. I also took data analysis courses. I did an introduction to programming language Python. I could use SQL to extract data from databases. So that would um, that would be used in my bioinformatics um, training. So I looked at the curriculum. So I knew that if I get into the program, I'll be expected to do bioinformatics. So this skill would help me in that. So I mentioned this in my essay. I presented my finding as a poster to my lecturers and colleagues that um, also showed that I have a good presentation skill. I also talked about my role as a medical lab assistant. So that helped me to hone my hand-to-eye coordination, handling pressure efficiently, manual dexterity, critical thinking, etc. I also um, interpreted how these skills would help me to manage the workload of the STP, the study requirements, and, and every other thing that is expected of me. Next, I talked about ability to support patients. These are just some personal skills, demonstrate values, NHS principle, good listening skills. So I was a healthcare assistant um, within the NHS. So that role, my role as the HCA exposed me to the NHS core value and patient care. It helped me to focus on patient-centered care. I use compassion to demonstrate how I meet the NHS core value. I know that you might think, oh my God, I don't have any NHS experience. What am I going to do? Do you work in a coffee shop? Do you work in McDonald's? Um, whatever you do, try to think about it. How do you listen to your customers? 
do you show compassion in doing your job do you listen to people do you help people are you a teacher are you a are you a teaching assistant whatever role you do so far you are interacting with people even if you are not interacting with people you have family members you have people around try to think of how you meet these core values and just know that if you don't have nhs experience think of a time in your life or an experience where you showed compassion that can be translated to patient care so in conclusion um i've also had a couple of people ask me how to end it so in conclusion i explained how i was the most suitable candidate for the role i explained what i was bringing to the table and um, at this point in concluding your application i would ask you what makes you the best candidate why should they take you so you see why i've told you that you don't just go in to write whatever you think you need to take your time reflect think about it i had like about three drafts i write i go over it again and over it again and over it again and um i also had my husband looking through um to proofread for me so summary and tips i would say avoid being too vague use smart goals and specific examples to demonstrate how you meet each person's specification keep your language very professional proofread i've told you my husband did my proofreading for me and he pointed out some points that didn't make any sense and i tried to rewrite them you need to start early. SDP opens in January. You don't want to have just a day to the closure and you come up with anything and you expect to get into the program. No, you need to you need to spend some time in writing it. Structure it clearly. Merge related points, summarize and ensure your points are clear. Show authenticity and enthusiasm. Oof. That was a lot of information. I hope this video was helpful. Drop a comment if you'd like to know more or if you need more clarification or guidance, put it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on TikTok and Instagram, STP with Cynthia. Compliments of the season. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.